what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with a next Giants update video, final one before the beginning of our summer training camp for the New York Giants, which technically starts today with rookies reporting in today and a couple of veterans including Eli himself reporting in today, but the real training camp starts Wednesday tomorrow. So real quick, on training camp videos, I want to address really quickly, I will try to get them out as soon as possible as, you know, like one day of training camp happens. The latest you could expect from me, a training camp video, say like day one, the latest you could expect it would be on Thursday. So, you know, I'm, I'm only putting like a good, you know, one day period out there of delay before you get any type of thoughts and information from me. Uh, and unless something big happens, like there's no reason you guys shouldn't get it either the day of the camp, you know, like a couple hours after it finishes or the next day. So that's just what I want to say on the uh, training camp videos. Very much going to be like my OTA vids. I'm going to try and get them out as quickly as possible, as promptly as possible. You know, if I miss one, I'll combine it with the next. In, in terms of format, just look back at my OTA videos. They're going to be extremely similar. Now then. This is a Giants update video, it might be a short one at that, but I wanted to address a couple things rolled into one here. So uh, first and foremost, on Monday the Giants brought in two veteran safeties, Trey Boston and Jonathan Cyprian in to have a look at them. This doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to sign them, what it means is you know they're going to have them come in, maybe run a few drills, maybe even participate in the training camp, I don't know. but. As of right now, they're not signed. This could change by when you guys see the video, uh, but who knows? I mean, they're just bringing them in for a look is what we're getting from reports right now. And this is uh, this is a good sign, I think. Our safety depth chart right now, it's kind of thin. We have, or you know, it's actually two at each position, I'm pretty sure. We got Jabril Peppers and Antoine Bethay slated as the starters right now, and I think they're fine for the starters. Then we have Sean Chandler and Michael Thomas as backups and probably a couple other guys I don't know but those are like the four main safeties we have right now uh, the main concern at the safety position would be free safety not that I'm doubting Antoine Bethea's ability or skill or experience or anything like that all of those he has the only issue I have or the only concern I have with him is of course his age and how his body would hold up with this upcoming NFL season now thus far he's sort of been like the Frank Gore of safeties in a way very similar to Eric Weddle these are two old age wonders that seemingly you know put out consistent performances each year there so with these two guys coming in at first it was a bit of a head scratcher but I was like it's good safety bet for whoever we take personally I would like to go for Trey Boston he was actually somebody I thought we would have signed a couple months ago when we picked up the I thought Trey Boston would have been a target mostly because of his relationship with James Betcher and the Cardinals and his even bigger relationship with Dave Gum and the Panthers, a lot of people don't know this, but he had like a legitimate, you know, like man-to-man, -man, like friend type of relationship with Dave Gellman. He was Dave's wife. While Dave was general manager of the Panthers and he, Trey Boston was on the Panthers, he was Dave Gellman's wife's favorite player. And when the Panthers had to release him, according to Boston at least, uh, there was, you know, a few shed tears there. Apparently they had a really close relationship. And when Gettleman got the job as the New York Giants general manager, uh, Boston was one of the guys that called him up and you know gave him his congratulations and whatnot. So not only because of that uh, stronger connection to uh, team personnel, but also I think Boston, and this is no disrespect to John Cyprian, he's a good player in his own right, but I think Boston is a better player because he has more experience at a starting position, a bit less of an injury history, and he's now played alongside Bethea. I'm pretty sure it was last year or the year before. He started 13 of 16 games for the Cardinals. Out of his 72 career games, he started 44 and has 11 career interceptions. So he's not he's not a world beater at safety. Uh, I really don't think any of our safeties are world beaters. Uh, our best one, I'm pretty sure, would be Drabil Preppers, and he has potential to become one of the best in the league. But other than that, we have you know good safeties, good average safeties. And while Cyprian isn't any slouch, like I said, he matches the role of sort of a backup, which is probably what we're looking for here. He started 70 games with two career interceptions and 506 uh, tackles. So, I mean, it's not, like, it's not like he's bad or anything. We're definitely looking to fill in some type of role play, you know, like some type of role playing role. Um, I can't word this in my mind, but definitely backup more than anything. 
if we sign Cyprian over Trey Boston, it's not like I'm going to be worried or anything. But whoever we get is good depth. I prefer Boston. Let me know what you guys think. Who would you prefer to sign if we do sign any of these guys? You know, I just think that Trey, both the connection and experience-wise, would be the better overall fit for us. And then also on Monday, the next set of news we got is um, the Giants closed up, uh, wrapped up deals with Daniel Jones, and I think it was on Sunday with O'Shea and Zimenez. They were the last two rookie, the last two rookies that they had to reach an agreement with with their contracts. For whatever the reason was, maybe it was some minor details. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was just some minor, minor details, probably with. I don't know, salary or something with both O'Shane and Daniel, but we finally locked them up. O'Shane is a player, as you guys know, that I'm very excited to see, even though he might have um, a similar role as Lorenzo Carter did last year, where he was more of a rotational player than a, you know, solid starter or backup. And I'm excited for Carter too, by the way, now that I brought him up, where I'm pretty sure he should have a full-on starter role to play on this defense. We finally locked them up. I'm pretty sure it will be, you know, maybe a 20, between 20 and 25 million dollar contract. You know, it's going to be on the rookie scale and whatnot. But O'Shane, great player. What can I say? Can't wait to see him on the field. Everybody knows he broke all of or held, holds all of his college's Old Dominion's records for sacks and tackles. That being 33 sacks and 51 and a half tackles, 33 quarterback hurries and 11 forced fumbles. I'm excited to see him try and translate that to the field. You know, he's He's just what I thought was a steal in the draft. And then they finally locked up Daniel Jones, who for some reason remains the the last person that they signed. Once again, I'm pretty sure it was just minor contract details. Who knows? He signed a four-year, $25.7 million contract, I believe, with a $60 million signing bonus. And of course, there's the fifth-year rookie option. Um, Jones, you already know my opinion on him. I came out the same draft night saying, I support the pick because the team knows a lot more than we do and because looking at Daniel Jones's tape it's clear to see that this guy has a lot of talent and potential has a lot of smarts football IQ and when surrounded with the right players as 90% of the quarterbacks in the NFL are right now prime examples being Mitch Trubisky and Jared Goff when surrounded with the right components can be a great quarterback in the NFL they finally signed him locked him up and while we had no doubt about it, now he will officially be able to start um, in training camp today. As I said, rookies enter training camp today. Excited to see what he does. Already put out a video on the uh, quote-unquote quarterback battle. I expect him to have a good training camp as everything we've heard out of OTAs and rookie mini camp was that this guy just improves every time he hits the field. Great quick study, great talent, great arm arm strength and football IQ you know just everything about him that's come out has been positive and it shows a steady concise consistent progression as a rookie quarterback so you know my outlook on his mini camp is that he'll improve we'll see good things out of him hopefully he has a great preseason and if we see him sometime during the regular season hopefully he performs well that's what I got for y'all today. Like I said, I'll be back on Thursday at the latest with a recap of training camp day one. All depends on, you know, my sources that I look at, how much information I gather from the Giants beat reporters and other reporters that might be present at the training camp. Let me know what you all think about these uh, updates. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out. You're...